Hello again everybody, this is Timothy Hansen from Max Depth, and today we're going to be talking about OCIO color profiles and lookup tables, or LUTs as they're more commonly known, and how we can bring this advanced color workflow into our day-to-day -day V-Ray work. And now, you may be asking, first question, obviously, what is an OCIO color profile and what is a lookup table? OCIO in general is a standard developed at Sony Pictures, allowing color and the way an image is displayed to be standardized uh, across multiple applications or stops along a production pipeline. More simply put, it's used to bring harmony between CG and comp and comp and final grade or DI. Uh, so each department is looking at the same image the same way, eliminating the opportunity for mistakes in color. Uh, let me give you a quick example. So here we have uh, just a simple frame that we've rendered and this has an OCIO profile attached to it. And so let me show you first what you would normally get without using uh, an, an OCIO profile. So the standard linear image that would be produced with V-Ray looks something like this. Now what we have here is a standard linear image with an sRGB color profile attached for our viewing and it's you know for all intents and purposes let's say that this is this is it we're happy with this and we're gonna pass this off to comp well oftentimes what will happen in when you're working on a production whether it's television or film there'll be a predefined lookup table or a color profile for that show or for that episode or that sequence of shots and now on the CG side, we're looking at a purely linear image, which is all fine and good. But once it gets into comp, they're going to be applying these color profiles and lookup tables. And what they're going to be seeing is going to be fundamentally different um, from what you're seeing on the CG side. So a way to work around that is by harnessing the power of the wonderful V-Ray frame buffer and importing that color profile into the frame buffer so that you can see at the CG level exactly what comp is going to see and what DI is going to see because the OCIO profile has been predetermined before any work has been done uh, for the show. So now let's compare the two. So we have our standard linear image coming straight out of V-Ray. And now here we have the same image it hasn't been re-rendered, it's just had the OCIO profile applied to it. And so as a baseline, CG would be handing off this linear image and then comp would be taking it into nuke or flame or you know whatever it is that it's being comped in. And the first thing they're gonna do is apply the OCIO profile or the lookup table to get it into parity with the rest of the show. And so now things can happen along the way where even just looking at these two images, the one on the left with the color profile, the blacks are much more crunched, it's much more saturated, you, you're picking up these little bits of green moss on this stone uh, in a way that you're not necessarily seeing it over here in the standard linear image. And so now if changes needed to be made or lighting adjustments needed to be made, something that you may do that looks fine on this image may then cause something to blow out on this side or the blacks will get lifted or the saturation can get off. So it just eliminates an extra step uh, or another opportunity for something to get messed up along the way when you're not working in parity with the other divisions down the line on the pipe. So now that we see uh, the difference between a standard linear EXR image and that same image with a lookup table or a OCIO profile applied to it. Now let's show you how to actually use this workflow within V-Ray. So on this image, you come down and in the frame buffer, you can activate our color correction controls and you'll see if you scroll down, it usually starts off at the top, you scroll down to the bottom, you'll have two sections, one for a lookup table and then one for an OCIO profile. Currently we have the OCIO profile activated. So now if I turn this off and you'll see that um, the sRGB gamma curve has not been applied, so let's get it back into linear space. So now this is that image that we had. This is how you would normally work in V-Ray traditionally 
but then once you apply this color profile you want to turn off that gamma correction and then now you're seeing it the way that it's supposed to be seen and the way that it will be seen down the road in comp or in DI. So in a, different shows use different color sampling methods. Um, some use OCIO profiles, some use lookup tables. So here's where you would pipe in your cube file or any other you know LUT file that you would get. I throw that on and then now you see that this is you know a uh, a more warming saturated LUT and if that's what the show is looking for then that's what that predefined look will be now you can work and continue to do your look dev and your lighting and your shading and things like that but you're looking at it in the world that it's going to live in eventually down the road you're seeing it in complete parity with your comp and with your final color and you know it just is one more opportunity to eliminate uh, any unforeseen errors in your lighting, in your look dev, because you're seeing everything the exact same way as everyone else down the pipeline will be. Now, I'd like to share with you a number of links so that you could test out things like this and or learn a bit more about the subject. So first, if you'd like to play with some uh, OCIO profiles, if you're not particularly working on a show or you're not at a studio, but you'd like to learn the technique uh, So that you would be able to apply it when you did, you know, hop into whatever gig you're working uh, You can go to opencolorio.org and in their download section. They have a number of sample color profiles There's also a pretty neat website lutz.iwltbap.com um, they have a number of uh, free LUTs that you can use to do your testing as well as buying a pack. It's worth it. It's only about 20 bucks. For a little bit more history on OCIO and color profiles in general, there's a really great article at FX Guide um, by Mike Seymour, The Art of Digital Color. So I suggest going and reading up on that if you want to know a little bit more about the subject. And if you'd like to look into a more advanced, in-depth collection of V-Ray tutorials, uh, you can head over to our website at max-depth.com and you can either hit this link on the side for our, uh, our V-Ray 3.1 from Maya training series or you can just go ahead and hit our store uh, on Vimeo. So thanks again for stopping by and I hope this tutorial has been helpful and will help take your color management to the next level. Thanks.